on how to break PDFs, breaking the encryption and the signatures by Fabian Eising and Vladislav Mladenov. Their talk was accepted at CCS this year in London, and they had that in November. Cette it comes from research that uh, basically produced two different kinds of papers, and it has been uh, people worldwide have been interested in what has been going on. Please give them a great round of applause and welcome them to the stage. Applaudissez uh, uh, Fabien Ising et Vladislav Mladenov uh, pendant qu'ils montent sur scène. So. Can you hear me? Yeah, perfect. Okay, now you can see the slides. Um, my name is Vladislav Mladenov, or just Vladi, if you have some questions. For me. And this is Fabian. And we are allowed today to talk about how to break PDF security, or more special, about um, how to break the cryptography operations in PDF files. We are a large team from University of Bochum. Münster and Hakmanit GmbH. So, um, as I mentioned, we will talk about cryptography in PDF files. Does it work? All right. Okay. Let's try that again. Okay. Ah, okay. perfect. This talk will uh, consist of two parts. Cette the first part is about digitally signed PDF files and how can we recognize such files. Numérique. If we open them, we see the um, information regarding Donc, the, uh, that the file was signed and all si verification ouvre, um, procedures sont, were valid. Sont and les more information, information regarding the signature validation panel and information about who signed this file. Sur, uh, this is the first part of the talk, and I will present um, this topic. And the second part is regarding PDF and files, and how can we recognize such files? If we, you try to open such files, the first thing you see is the password prompt, and after entering the correct password, the file is decrypted, and you can read the content within this file. If you open it with Adobe, additional information regarding si if this file is secured or not is uh, displayed further. And this is the second part of our talk, and Fabian we will talk how can we break the PDF encryption. So, before we start with the attacks on signatures or encryption, we first need some basics. And after six slides, you will be experts regarding PDF files and you will understand everything about it. But, um, maybe it's a little bit boring, so be patient, uh, there are only six slides. So the first is quite easy. PDF files are, um, the first specification was in 1993, and almost at the beginning, uh, PDF cryptography operations like signatures and encryption was already there. The last version is PDF 2.0, and it was released in 2017. And according to Adobe, 1.6 billion files um, are uh, on the web and perhaps more exchanged uh, beyond the web. So basically, PDF files are everywhere, and that's the reason why we considered this topic and tried to uh, find or to analyze the security of the features. If we have some very simple file and we open it with Adobe Reader, si on a un the first thing we see is, of course, the content, um, Hello World in this case, and additional information regarding the focused page on and how many pages this document has. But what would happen if we don't use a PDF viewer and just use si on some pas un de text editor? We exemple, use avec the Notepad++ to open and um, later manipulate the files. So I will zoom this thing, uh, th this file, and the first thing we see is that we can read it. Perhaps it's quite, um, quite funny, and it's um, uh, not uh, uh, quite funny, and it's not quite funny, and it's not quite funny, and it's not quite funny, 
Paul peut quand même extraire certaines informations de ce fichier. Par exemple, le nombre de pages. Et ici, on voit l'information que le PDF est construit avec une seule page. Mais ce qui est plus intéressant encore, c'est qu'on peut voir le contenu du fichier. Donc, ce qu'on apprend, ce qu'on a appris, c'est qu'on peut utiliser un éditeur de texte simple pour lire un, euh, un PDF et le modifier. Donc, rentrons dans les détails. Comment un PDF est-il structuré et comment il traité. Donc, un PDF est constitué de quatre parties. Le header, le corps, c'est la partie la plus importante. L'information présentée à l'utilisateur. Et ensuite, on a la section XREF et trailer. Ce qui est très important quand on traite euh, des, des PDF, c'est qu'on ne les traite pas du haut en bas, mais du bas en haut. Donc la première chose qu'un un, un lecteur de PDF euh, c'est le trailer. Donc regardons ce qu'il y a comme information dans le trailer. On a deux informations très importantes. La première chose, c'est l'élément de base du PDF. Donc quel est le premier et qui sera traité. La deuxième information importante, c'est où commence la section XREF. C'est juste un offset euh, de PDF euh, qui vous montre à quel endroit. Donc ce pointer, comme on vient de le dire, euh, vous euh, mène à la section XREF. Donc regardons la section XREF. Donc la section XREF, c'est un catalogue qui pointe euh, aux aiguilles sur le lieu euh, dans lequel sont stockés les différents objets. Comment est-ce qu'on peut lire cette section XREF La première information XREF, c'est que le premier objet qu'on a défini ici a l'ID 0. Et on a cinq éléments consécutifs qui sont définis. Le premier objet est ici. Donc la première entrée, c'est la position C. Et la deuxième, le deuxième élément, c'est la version. Et le troisième élément, c'est si l'objet est utilisé ou non. Donc quand on lit euh, cette section XREF, on peut voir que l'objet avec l'ID 0, et à la position de so the first, the, the pas with the ID 1 is at the position 9 and so on and so forth. Donc so le deuxième objet à la position 9 et the object uh, number donc, comes from uh, l'objet avec l'ID 4 1 2 0 and 4. So the object with the ID 4 objet avec uh, l'ID 4 peut être trouvé à la position at, at offset, um, 184 et et est utilisé. In other words, the PDF viewer knows where Donc le object, uh, lecteur de PDF sait quel type d'objet et l'objet est trouvé et il peut l'afficher de manière part, body, Maintenant, on va passer à la partie body, la plus importante, the Donc, le corps, is celui qui contient le contenu so affiché à le corps this one. PDF. L'objet 4.40 et celui-ci contient to, le, euh, les éléments « Hello World ». Exactly les autres euh, objets, on les voit par rapport Comment est-ce qu'on peut lire ce type On a l'objet commençant avec l'ID, l'élément. Et le mot PJ, les lettres. Maintenant, on sait à quel endroit l'objet commence, à quel endroit il se termine. Maintenant, comment traiter le corps Comme euh, dans la partie trailer, on avait une référence par rapport à la racine. Donc, on avait l'élément avec l'ID 1, la génération Maintenant, on commence à lire le document par le haut. Donc, on a un catalogue et une référence vers des pages. Donc, les pages, c'est juste une description 
de toutes les pages qui sont contenues dans le fichier. Ce qu'on voit ici, c'est qu'on a ce numéro, le décompte 1, on a une seule page et la référence à l'objet si nous avons des pages, pages on a plusieurs pages. On a ici plusieurs éléments. Ensuite, page, on a une page. Ici, on a le contenu qui est une référence vers l'élément. Euh, Parfait. Si vous comprenez ça, alors vous savez tout, presque tout sur l'EF. Vous avez tout vous compris tout tout parce que tout sur les PDF. Maintenant, vous pouvez ouvrir vous avez tout compris parce que tout sur les PDF. Sur les PDF. Au PDF, dans un éditeur de texte, et les analyses. Maintenant, on a besoin. Ah, j'ai oublié euh, la dernière partie. C'est simplement une ligne qui l'information sur la version utilisée. Ah, 1.4. Pour la dernière version, ce sera 2.0. Maintenant, on a besoin de cette fonctionnalité qui s'appelle la mise à jour incrémentale. J'appelle cette fonction. Vous connaissez la fonction pour mettre um, des notes euh, ou euh, marquer des sections dans le PDF. Moi, j'appelle ça réguler les thèses de, 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 de master ou de bachelor de mes étudiants. Uh, mais uh, la fonctionnalité s'appelle uh, mise à jour incrémentée. Techniquement, Techniquement, en mettant une note comme ça sur votre PDF, cette information additionnelle est rajoutée à la fin PDF. On a une mise à jour port qui contient les informations additionnelles ou les objets additionnels qui ont été ajoutés. Et on a des nouvelles sections XREF et un nouveau trailer qui pointe vers un nouvel objet. We are done. Donc, on a fini. How ca, um, considering incremental update, um, considérant les we saw that mises à jour incrémentales, to put for, for mainly for sticky notes or highlighting, ça principalement pour euh, être en valeur des sections, update, des notes, we can, um, mais c'est important parce que objects. on peut aussi redéfinir des objets existants. Object Par exemple, notre euh, euh, objet avec l'ID 4, so on peut lui ajouter des nouveaux world, world with, On remplace, uh, par exemple, ici... Euh, pas Hello World par notre euh, so euh, euh, par un autre terme uh, et du coup la section XREF est mise à jour et le trailer aussi donc c'est important um, parce qu'on peut en utilisant cette fonctionnalité là redéfinir des contenus existants et pas uniquement so, let's talk about donc on va maintenant parler de la signature de documents First, we need a difference between electronic signature and digital signature. Electronic signature, signature from a technical point of signature. view, is just an image. I just um, wrote it um, on my PC and put it into the file. There is no cryptographic protection. It could be me ah, lying on the beach doing something um, from cryptographic point of view is the same. It does not provide any security, any cryptographic security. What we will talk here is about digital signed files. So if you uh, open such files, um, you have si the additional information regarding um, the validation about the signatures uh, and who signed this PDF file. <coughs> so as I mentioned before, this talk will concentrate only on this digitally signed PDF files. How What kind of process is behind digitally signing um, PDF files? Imagine we have this abstract overview of a PDF document. We have the header, body, XRF section, and trailer, and we want to sign it. What happens is that we take this PDF file and via incremental update we put additional information regarding the There is a new catalog and more important, a new signature object containing the signature, signature value and information about who signed this PDF signature. file. And of course, there is an XREF section and trailer. 
ça a euh, une section XREF et un trait. So manipulations within this area should not be possible, right? Cette, cette, cette yeah, let's talk about this, how, why it's not possible and how can we break it. First, we need an attack scenario, what we want to achieve. As an attacker, we assumed in our research that the attacker possess um, this signed PDF file. This could be an old contract receipt or, um, in our case, a bill from Amazon. And if we open this file, the signature is valid, so everything is green, um, no warning cards are thrown, and everything is fine. What we try to do is take this file, manipulate it somehow, and then send it to the victim. And now the victim expects to receive a digitally signed PDF file. So just printing the digital signature is a very trivial scenario, and we did not consider it because it's trivial. Um, we consider that the victim expects to see that there is a signature and it is valid, so no warning cards are thrown. And the entire left side is exactly the same from the novel uh, normal behavior. But on the other side, the content was exchanged, so we, um, we manipulated the receipt and exchanged it with another content. The question is now how can we do it on a technical level? And we came up with three attacks. Um, incremental saving attacks, signature wrapping, and universal signature forgery. And I will now introduce the techniques and how these attacks are working. The first attack is the incremental saving attack. So I mentioned before um, that via incremental saving or via incremental updates, we can add and remove and even redefine uh, already existing objects. And the signature still stays valid. Why is this happening? Consider now again our case. Um, we have some header, body, XREF table, and trailer, and the file is now signed. And the signature protects only the signed area. So what would happen if I put a sticky note or some highlighting? An incremental update happens. If I open this file, usually this happens. Si we have the information that this signature is valid when it was signed and so on and so forth. So our first idea was to just put new body updates, redefine already existing content, um, and with the extra table and trailer, um, we point to the new content. This is quite trivial because it's a legitimate feature in PDF files. So we didn't expect to be quite successful and we were not so successful. Um, but the first idea, we applied this attack, we opened it and we got this message. So it's kind of a weird message because uh, an experienced user C is valid, but the document has been updated, and you should know what does this exactly means. But we did not consider this attack as a successful because um, there, there, the warning is not the same, or the, the status of the message is not the same. So, what we did is to evaluate this first against this trivial case against all the, uh, all the viewers we have. And LibreOffice, for example, was vulnerable against this trivial attack. Only, this was the only viewer which was vulnerable against... The only editor who was vulnerable to this kind of attack was... Okay, the other viewers are quite secure, but how do they detect this incremental attack? So you can see how they have been... And from the developer point of view, the latest thing we can do is just to check if Another extra ce qu'on peut faire, c'est est-ce que vérifier que après so l'application la, de la signature, on a euh, une belle euh, table XREF ou un nouveau trait. Euh, donc, on a essayé de rajouter broken, juste une mise à jour board, et voir si peut-être que le kind of uh, lecteur PDF allait réparer automatiquement. Color. 
Et l'erreur, et ça nous a procuré un peu plus de, de succès, parce que la logique de vérification, ne va pas nous donner de, euh, euh, de messages parce que euh, on n'a pas de modification des tables XREF ni du trailer, donc euh, on n'a aucun warning. Et l'éditeur de le, le lecteur de PDF a réparé automatiquement certains. Euh, avec certains lecteurs, on a essayé de et euh, le corps et le trailer et certains lecteurs de PDF certains euh, éditeurs vérifient si euh, le corps a euh, euh, un lien ou est lié avec la signature de l'objet. Ce qu'on a fait, c'est qu'on a euh, fait un copy-paste la signature initiale et on a forcé le PDF à valider le signé seconde fois. Et par exemple, Foxit ou Master PDF étaient vulnérables contre ce type de attaque. Les lecteurs comme Foxit étaient vulnérables à ce type d'attaque. Donc, au final, on a 22 lecteurs de PDF, on a des différentes versions d'Adobe, Foxit. Et comme vous pouvez le voir, 11 sur 22 étaient vulnérables à nos updates incrémentels. Et on a eu pas mal de succès et euh, certaines ont été résolues parce que certains développeurs ont quand même considéré ce genre de... A full signature bypass means that there is no possibility for the victim to detect the complete signature. A limited signature bypass means that the victim, if the victim clicks on one, it is limited. One additional window. C'est qu'on a si la victime va cliquer un endroit spécial dans le texte, valider la signature. Dans ce cas-là. The most important thing is by opening the file, there was a status message that the signature validation and all signatures are valid. So this was the first layer, and the viewers were warned against this. So let's talk about the second attack. Parlons de la deuxième classe d'attaque. This is the most complex attack of all three classes. C'est l'attaque la plus complexe euh, sur nos trois euh, classes d'attaque. On va regarder un peu plus en made. détail la structure des have signatures a PDF de PDF. We have Imaginons qu'on a un fichier PDF. Document. The original document contains uh, notre header, header the avec uh, notre document original. Et nous voulons le signer. This document. Technically, again, an incremental update is provided. And we have a new catalog. We have some other catalogs, for example, certificates and so on. And the signature objects. And we will now concentrate on this signature object because it's essential for the attack we want to carry out. And the signature object contains a lot of. Information, but we on a beaucoup d'informations. On a uniquement uh, deux éléments qui sont intéressants. C'est les contenus. C'est uh, les valeurs des signatures. Uh, the signature value and the et uh, certificat utile pour valider et on a la byte range, c'est quatre valeurs différentes. Comment ces valeurs sont-elles utilisées The first two, A and B, define the first signed area, and this is here from the beginning of the document until the start of the signature value. Why we need this? Because the signature value is part of the signed area, so we need to include the signature value from the document completion. 
bah, uh, retirer la signature en elle-même. C'est ça que la signature, la première partie, et euh, à partir du début du document, début de la signature, et ensuite à partir de la deuxième partie, c'est à partir de la fin de la signature jusqu'à la fin du document. C'est spécifié par les deux lettres C et D. Maintenant, on a tout protégé à part la valeur de signature en elle-même. Ce qu'on voulait faire, c'est essayer de rajouter un peu d'espace pour notre attaque. Notre idée, c'était de déplacer la deuxième partie signée. Comment pourrait-on faire ça En gros, on peut le faire en redéfinissant un byte range. On voit ici, ici, le byte range pointe A à B. Made any manipulation in this part, right? On n'a rien manipulé dans cette partie-là. So C'est toujours valide. And the part, la deuxième the partie, new C value and the next D bytes, a la nouvelle valeur C. Here, right? Et D, so on n'a pas modifié. We didn't change anything in the signed area. On n'a rien modifié de la and the signature is still valid. signée. But Et what la signature est toujours valide. Mais ce qu'on a créé, c'est un espace objects, pour des objets um, malicieux, padding, padding et une nouvelle section xref qui pointe Important vers notre objet malicieux. La partie xref pointe par le trailer, so donc comme on ne peut pas modifier le trailer, cette But position est fixe, la like situation de cette attaque. Et ça a marché magnifiquement bien. Et la question donc, how many, uh, PDF comment bien les lecteurs de PDF ont été vulnérables à cette attaque donc, On voit ici dans le tableau le, la colonne SWA, 17 lecteurs de PDF sur 22 étaient vulnérables à ce type d'attaque. C'est le résultat qu'on attendait. L'attaque est complexe. C'est que beaucoup de développeurs n'avaient um, uh, pas conscience de ce type d'attaque. Uh, so C'est donc pour ça qu'il y a tellement de vulnérabilités dans les deux. Maintenant, à la dernière classe d'attaques, Universal Signature Forgery. Et nous l'appelons Universal Signature Forgery, mais je Another um, definition for this attack, I call them stupid implementation flaws. <laughs> um, we are coming from the pen testing area, and I know a lot of you are pen testers too, and many of you have experience, quite interesting experience with zero bytes, null values, or some kind of weird values. And this is what we tried in this kind of attacks. Just try to do some stupid values or um, ce genre remove avec des references stupides. and see what happens. Considering the signature, there are two different um, important elements, the contents signature. containing the signature value and the byte range pointing to what is exactly signed. So what would happen si, if si we est, remove uh, the contents? Our si hope was le... that the information regarding the signature is still shown by the viewer as valid without validating any signature because it was not possible. And by just removing the signature value is quite obvious idea. Um, and we were not successful with this kind of attack, but let's proceed with another values like, for example, contents without any value or contents like uh, uh, equals null or zero bytes. And considering this last version, we had two viewers which were vulnerable against this attack. And um, another, um, another case is, uh, for example, by removing the byte range. By removing this byte range, we have some signature value, but we, we don't know what is exactly signed. So, um, we tried this attack, and of course, byte range without any value, or null bytes, byte or byte range valeur, avec with la minus or negative, um, uh, negative numbers. And usually this last 
crashed very a lot of years. Que... But the most interesting is that Adobe made this mistake est que by just Adobe removing Adobe the byte uh, range. We were error. able to bypass the entire bah. security. We didn't expect this bah. behavior, but it was Et a stupid si implementation flaw allowing us to do anything in this document. And all the exploits Dans we show in our um, presentations were made on Adobe with bah. this attack. So let's see what were the results of this attack. As you can see, only 4 of 22 viewers were vulnerable against this attack, and only Adobe Unlimited. For the others, uh, there was limitation, because if you click on the signature validation, um, then a warning was thrown. It was very easy for Adobe to fix, and as you can see, Adobe didn't mistake, um, uh, made any mistake regarding incremental saving and signature wrapping, but regarding universal signature forgery, they were vulnerable against this attack. And this is the hope of our approach. In summary, we were able to break 21 of 22 PDF viewers. The only... Thanks. <laughs> Sur les 22. The only secure PDF viewer is Seul Adobe lecteur, 9, uh, sécurisé, which est ad... is um, deprecated and has remote code et execution. The only, et, uh, the à, only à une users de code allowed à to use them or are using it are Linux users because this is the last version qui... available for Linux. Uh, les... And that's the reason why you consider it. So. I'm done with the talk about PDF signatures, and now Fabian can talk sur about la signature PDF de encryption. PDF. Thank you. Yes. Okay, now that we've dealt with signatures, let's Alors talk about the cryptographic de signature, on va PDF, parler and that is encryption. And chiffre. some of you might remember our Certains PDF X vulnerability from earlier this year. It's, X. of course, an attack with a logo. And it presents two novel attack techniques targeting PDF okay. encryption that have never been applied to PDF encryption before. So one of them is the so-called direct exfiltration, where we break the cryptography without even touching the cryptography. So no ciphertext manipulation here. The second one are the so-called malleability gadgets, and those are actually targeted modifications of the ciphertext of the document. But first, let's take a step back and let again si take some keywords in. So PDF Et uses IS. <laughs> okay, well, IS uh, PDF is good. Uh, Nothing can go wrong, right? AES. So let's go. Uh, bien, donc uh, is fine. Tout va bien. Well, of course we didn't stop here, but bon, on pas arrêté là, look. So on they use CBC mode of uh, operation, so cipher blockchain. C CBC comme and what's more important is that they don't use any integrity protection. So it's unintentionally protected ISCBC, and you might remember this scenario from the text against encrypted emails, so against OpenPGP and SMIME. It's basically the same problem. But first, who actually uses PDF encryption, you might ask? For one, we found some local banks in Germany use encrypted PDFs as a drop-in replacement for SMIME or OpenPGP because their customers might not want to deal with um, set, uh, with the setup of encrypted emails. Second one where some drop-in plugins for encrypted email as well. So there are some companies out there that produce a product that you can put into your Outlook and you can use encrypted PDF files instead of encrypted email. We also found that some scanners and medical devices were able to send encrypted PDF files via email. So you can set a password on that machine and they will send the encrypted PDF via email and uh, you have to put in the password some other way. And lastly, we found that some governmental enfin, organizations use encrypted PDF documents. For example, the US Department of Justice allows for the send, sending in some claims via encrypted PDFs. And I have exactly no idea how you how they get the password, but at least they allowed. So as we are from academia, let's take a step uh, back and look at our attacker model. So we've got Alice and Bob. Alice wants to send a document Alice. to Bob. And she wants to send it over an unencrypted channel, 
or a channel she doesn't trust. So, of course, she decides to encrypt it. Second scenario is they want to upload it to a shared storage, for example, Dropbox or any other shared storage. And, of course, they don't trust the storage, so again, they use end-to-end -end encryption. So let's assume that this shared storage is indeed dangerous or malicious. So Alice will, of course, again upload the encrypted document to the attacker in this case, will perform some targeted modification of that, and will send the modified document back to Bob, who will happily put in the password because, from his point of view, it's undistinguishable from the original document, and the original plain text will be leaked back to the attacker, breaking the confidentiality. So let's take a look at the first attack on how we did that. That's the direct exfiltration, so breaking the cryptography without touching any cryptography, as I like to say. But first, encryption in a, in a nutshell, PDF encryption. So you have seen the structure of a PDF document, there's a header with a version number, there's a body where all the interesting objects live, so there's Donc our confidential idea. content that we want to actually well, to actually exfiltrate as an attacker. And finally, there's the XREF table and the trailer. So what changes if we decide to encrypt this document? Well, actually, not a whole lot. So instead of the confidential data, of course, there's now some encrypted ciphertext. Okay. And the rest pretty much remains the same. The only thing that is added is a new value in the trailer that tells us how to decrypt the data again. So there's pretty much of the structure left unencrypted. And we thought about why is this? And we took a look at the standard. So this is an excerpt from the PDF specification. And I've highlighted an interesting task for you. Encryption is only applied to strings and streams. Well, those are the values that actually can contain any text in a document. And all other objects are not encrypted. And that is because, well, they want to allow random access to the whole document. So no passing the whole document before actually showing page 16 of the encrypted document. Well, that seems kind of reasonable. So, but that also means that the whole document structure is unencrypted, and only the streams and strings are encrypted. Coup, this reveals a lot of information uh, to an attacker that he or she should have, probably. That's, for one, the number and size of pages, that's the number and size of the objects in the uh, document, and that's also including any links, so any hyperlinks in the document that are actually there. So, that's a lot of information an attacker probably shouldn't have. So next we thought, maybe we can do some more stuff. Can we add our own unencrypted content? And we took a look at the standard again and found that there are so-called crypt filters, which provide high granularity control of the encryption. This basically means as an attacker, I can change a document to say, hey, only strings in this document are encrypted and streams are unencrypted. That's what the identity filter is for. Certain I have no idea why they decided to add that to a document format, but it's there. So that means there's support for partial encryption. Ça veut dire a un and that support means the content can be mixed with actual encrypted content. And we found 18 different techniques to do that with different readers. So there's a lot of ways to do that in the different readers. So let's have a look at the demo. So we have this document this encrypted document, we put in our password and get our secret message. We now open it again in the text editor. We see in object 4.0 down here, there's the actual cipher text of the object, so of the message. And we see it's IS encrypted with a 32 by key, so it's IS 256. Okay, now we decide to add a new object that contains, well, plain text. And, well, we simply add that to the contents array of this document. So we say, display this on the first page, save the document, we open it, and we'll put in our password, and, oh well, this is what Okay, so now we have broken the integrity 
of an encrypted document. Well, you might think maybe they didn't want any integrity in their encrypted files. Maybe that's the use case. I don't know. But we thought maybe we can somehow exfiltrate the plain text this way. So again, we took a step back and we looked at the PDF specification. And the first thing we found were so-called submit form actions. And that's basically in the same as the form on the website. You can put in data, you might have seen this in a contract, in a PDF contract, where you can put in your name and your address and so on and so on. And the data that is saved inside of that is saved in strings and streams. And now remember, that is everything that is encrypted in a document. And of course, you can also send that back to an attacker or, well, to a legitimate use case, of course, via clicking a button, but clicking buttons. So we again looked at the standard and found the so-called open action. And that is an action, for example, submitting a form that can be performed upon open action. So how might this look? This is how a PDF form looks already with the attack flight. So we've got an URL here that is unencrypted because all strings in this document are unencrypted. And we've got the value object 2.0 where the actual encrypted data lives. So that is the value of the form field. And what will happen on the attacker side as soon as this document is opened? Well, we'll get a post request with the confidential content. Let's have a demo. Again, we have this document, we put in our password, it's the original document you have already seen. We reopen it in a text viewer, by a text editor. Again, see, it's encrypted. And we decide to change all strings to the identity filter. So no uh, encryption is applied to strings from now on. And then we add a whole blob of information for the open action and for the form. So this will, be op uh, this will be performed as soon as the document is opened. There's a URL, p.df, and the value is the encrypted object 4.0. We start an HTTP server on the domain we've speci specified. We open the document, put in the password again, and as soon as we open the document, Adobe will hopefully show us a warning, but they will already click the button for remembering that for the future. And if you accept that, you will see your secret message on the attacker server. And that is pretty bad already. Okay. The same works for hyperlinks. So, okay. of course, there are links in PDF documents. And as on the web, we can define a base URL for hyperlinks. So we can say all URLs from this document start with HTTP p.df. And of course, we can define any object as a URL. So any object we prepare this way can be sent as a URL. And that will, of course, trigger a GET request upon opening the document again if we defined an open action for the same object. So again, pretty bad and breaks the confidentiality. And of course, everybody loves JavaScript and PDF files. And that works well. OK, let's talk about ciphertext attacks, so actual si cryptographic attacks. No more not touching the crypto. So you might remember the e-fail attacks on OpenPGP uh, and SMIME. And PGP those had basically three prerequisites. One were ciphertext malleability, uh, so it's called malleability gadgets. That's why we need ciphertext malleability. And we've got no integrity protection, that's a plus. Then we need some known plain text for actual targeted modifications. And we need an exfiltration channel to send the data back to an attacker. Well, exfiltration channels are already dealt with as we have hyperlinks and forms. So we can all really check that. Yes. Let's talk about ciphertext malleability or, or what we call gadgets. So some of you might remember this from Crypto 101 or whatever lecture you ever had on cryptography. This is the decryption function of CBC, so cipher blockchaining. And si it's basically, you've got your ciphertext up here, si and your plain text Et down here. Text, uh, and it works si by simply si decrypting a block of ciphertext, XORing the previous block of ciphertext onto that, and you'll get the plain text. 
So what happens if you decide to change a single bit in the ciphertext? For example, the first bit of the initialization vector. Well, that same bit will flip in the actual plain text. Wait a second. What happens if we happen to know a whole plain text block? Well, we can XOR that onto the first block and basically get all zeros or what we call a gadget or a blank sheet of paper because we can write on that by taking a chosen plain text and XORing that onto this result. And this way we can, for example, construct URLs in the actual cipher text or the actual resulting plain text. What we can also do with these gadget is, gadgets is moving them somewhere else in the document, cloning them, so we can have multiple gadgets at multiple places in the ciphertext. But remember, if you do that, there's always the avalanche effect of CBCs, so you will have some random bytes in here, but the URL still remains in place. Okay. That's ciphertext malleability done. As I've said, we need some plain text. We need to have some known plain text. And as the PDF standard has been pretty helpful up until now in breaking PDF encryption, let's take a look again. And we've, what we found were permissions. So a PDF document can have different permissions for the author and the user of the document. This basically means the author can edit the document and the users might not be able to do that. And of course, people started to change with that value, started to tamper with that value if it was left unencrypted. So in the newest version, it was decided this should be encrypted as a 16 byte value. So we've got 16 bytes. So we've got 16 bytes. So we've got 16 bytes. We need room for extension. We need a lot of permissions. Then we put four bytes of actual permission value. Four bytes of actual permission value. Then we need one for the encrypted data document. And for some reason, we need some extra permissions. Then we need one for the encrypted data document. And for some reason, we need some extra permissions. Then we need one for the encrypted data document. And for some reason, we need some extra permissions. Then we need one for the encrypted data document. And for some reason, we need some extra permissions. Then we need one for the encrypted data document. And for some reason, we need some extra permissions. Then we need one for the encrypted data document. And for some reason, we need some extra permissions. Then we need one for the encrypted data document. And for some reason, we need some extra permissions. Then we need one for the we take all of that, encrypt it, Donc, si on and prend tout ça, oh well, we know a lot of that. And that is basically known plain text chiffre, by design, which is bad. En Let's look at how this clair, looks uh, so, You see the perms value, I've marked it down here, that is the actual extended value I've shown you on the last slide. And above that you see the unencrypted et value et that's si inside this perms value, so the minus four in this case, it's basically a bit field. On the right side, you see the actual encrypted contents, and helpfully, all of this is encrypted under the same document-wide key in the newest version of the specification. And that means we can re reuse this plain text anywhere in the document we want, and we can reuse this to build projects. To sum that last point up for you, Adobe decided to add permissions to the PDF format, and people started tampering with them, so they decided to encrypt these permissions to prevent tampering. And now non plain text is available to attackers. Uh, all right. So that's basically all of the creative it's done. And let's again have a, de have a demo. So we again open this document, put in our password. Well, as soon as Chrome decides to open this document. We put in our password, it's the same as before. Now I've prepared a script for you because I really can't do this live. <laughs> and it basically does what I've told you. It's getting a blank gadget from the perms value. It's generating a URL from that. It's generating a field name so that it will look nice on the server side. We regenerate this document and put a form in there. We start a web server, open this modified document, put in the password again. And, oh well, Chrome doesn't even ask. So as soon as this document is opened in Chrome and the password is put in, we will get our secret message delivered to the attacker. Okay. So, we took a look at 27 viewers and found all of them were at least one of our attacks. So some of them work with no user interaction, as you have seen in Chrome. Some uh, work with user inter interaction in specific cases, as you've seen with Adobe, with the warning. But generally, all viewers were attackable in one way or the other. So what can be done about all of this? 
Well, you might think signatures might help. That's usually the first point people bring up. A signature on the encrypted file will help. Well, no, no, no. Why is that? Well, for one, a broken signature does not prevent opening the document. So it will still be exfiltrated as soon as the password is put in. Signatures can be stripped because they are not encrypted. And as you have seen before, they can also be forged in most viewers. Signatures are not the answer. Closing exfiltration channels is also not the answer, because the answer because for one it's hard to do, and how would you even find all uh, exfiltration channels in 800 pages standard? And I mean we have barely scratched the surface here of exfiltration channels. And should we really move forms and hyperlinks from documents? And should we move JavaScript? Okay. And finally, if you have to do that, please ask the user before connecting to a web server. So let's look at some vendor reactions. Apple decided to do exactly ah, what I told you, to add a dialog. Donc, uh, Apple the user and exactly the whole URL with the plain text. Uh, and Google decided to stop trying to fix the unfixable in Chrome. They fixed the automatic exfiltration, but there's really nothing they can do about the standard. So this is a problem that has to be done in the standard. And that is basically that for Mitigating wrapping attacks, we have to deprecate partial encryption and disallow access from unencrypted to encrypted objects. And against the gadget attacks, we have to use authenticated encryption ISGCI. And Adobe has told us that they will be escalating this to the ISO working group that's now responsible for the PDF standard, and this will be taken up in the next revision. So that's a win in my book. Thank you so much, guys. That was really awesome. Uh, please queue up by the microphones if you have any questions. We still have some time left for Q&A. Um, but I think your research is really, really interesting because it opens my mind to, like, how would this actually be able to be misused in practice? Like, and, and I don't know, like, what's your take? I guess since you've been working so much with this, you must have some kind of idea as to what devious things you could come up with. I mean, it's still an attacker scenario that requires a lot of resources and a, and a very motivated attacker. So this might not be very important to the normal user. Let's be real here. So most of us are not targeted by the NSA, I guess. So you need an active attacker, an active man in the middle to actually perform these attacks. Quand même être un utilisateur Great, très motivé pour pouvoir And mettre en place ce genre d'attaque. Et donc on a une question uh, yes. au micro. You said that Quatre. the next standard might have a fix. Uh, do you know a time Et frame uh, on how long it takes? Ce sera fixé dans la prochaine version euh, prochain standard PDF. Est-ce que tu sais combien de temps well, ça prend pour construire no, un tel standard? Really we have talked with Adobe and they told us they will show the next version of the standard to us before actually releasing that, but we have no time frame at all for them. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Microphone number five, please. Thank you for the very interesting talk. Merci. Um, you showed in the first part that the signature has like these four numbers with the byte range. La signature a cette uh, ce chiffre avec le like four byte range. Le... Est-ce que uh, cette uh, ce chiffre ne font pas partie? Pourquoi cette partie ne fait pas partie de la signature? Est-ce que c'est visible? But we just defined the second one. Euh, ils en font partie, mais en fait, on a ce créneau de byte range. Seulement celui qu'on a, qu a modifié va être, va être traité. Thank you so much. Microphone number four, please. Uh, oh, this is way too high for me. La, okay. I have an answer and a question for you. Uh, you mentioned question. during the talk that you weren't Sorry. sure how the Department of Justice yes. distributes the passwords for encrypting uh, PDFs. The answer Les is in plain text PDF. in a separate email or uh, at the password dans un of the week, which uh, is distributed through various means. Uh, 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 that de is also what the Department of Homeland Security does and the Military is somewhat Um, as a question, 
Pas mes questions. J'ai un demi teraoctet que j'aimerais faire scanner par attaque. Si pour des erreurs rédactionnelles, est-ce que vous connaissez la méthode pour scanner des documents sur la présence de telles attaques Scanning for the gadget attacks is actually bah, possible if you try petit. to do some entropy Scan detection. So, because you reuse ciphertext, you will have less entropy in your ciphertext, but that's pretty hard to do. Diode exfiltration should probably be detectable by scanning simply for words like identity or the other 18 different techniques that we provided in the paper. But I don't know of any tools to do that automatically. Uh, so thank you. Great, thank you. And microphone number two, please. Uh, thank you for a very interesting Merci pour uh, cette présentation très intéressante. J'ai une suggestion et une question. Pour la mitigation, si le lecteur PDF dans une VM qui n'est pas connecté à Internet ou avec un firewall, c'est vertueux. Pour ma question, est-ce que vous avez pensé à faker les certificats qui sont utilisés pour les signatures Nous avons les certificats et l'entire chaîne de trust pour cette partie est totalement sécurisée. It was just an assumption to just concentrate just only on attacks we we already sure. found. So perhaps there there will be further research provided by us in the next months and years. We might just hear more from you in the future. <laughs> Thank you so much. And now questions from the internet, please. Une question d'internet. Uh, two questions to the first part of your talk. Um, Deux questions pour la from the internet. The first uh, one is uh, internet. you mentioned a few reactions but can you give a bit more detail uh, about your experience uh, with vendors while reporting de détails this. avec les, les éditeurs yeah, de logiciels quand vous avez signalé for les, the first time les we failles. Started, um, we, we asked the Third team from BSI, Zerbund, uh, um, to help us because Zert, there were a lot of affected vendors and we were not able to, to, to provide the support in a, in a feasible way. So they supported us the entire way. We first created a report with containing the exact description of the vulnerabilities and all the exploits. Then we distributed it to the BSI and they contacted the vendors and just proxied the communication. And there was a lot of communication, so I'm not aware of the entire communication, but only about the technical stuff where we were asked to just um, retest the, the fix and so on. So there was a reaction um, from Adobe, Foxit, and the, um, a lot of viewers reacted on our attacks and contacted us, us. but not everybody. Thank you so much. Unfortunately, that's the only time that we have available for questions today. I think you guys might stay around for a couple of minutes just if someone has any more questions. Uh, Fabian Eysink and Vladislav Mladenov, thank you so much. It was very interesting. Please give them a great round of applause. Thank you.